Hello, my name is Eric. I'm your Eagle Scout at home. During this Scouting at Home video series, we are going to be teaching you techniques and skills that Scouts of all ages can work on at their homes. It's very important to know that both Cub Scouts and Scouts BSA members can work on these skills and refine them. Do it with a buddy, do it with a parent or a guardian. Also, get your friends to join in on the fun. Send them this link to the Facebook or YouTube video and they too can learn along with these scout skills. Also, if you're watching this video and you're not already a part of the scouting movement here at LaSalle Council, go to BeASCOUT.org and you can find a local scout pack or troop to join. In this video, we're going to be talking about some basic principles of fire building. Now, there's a lot that can go into fire building and starting fires. In fact, in the Scouts BSA program when I was a youth, I learned how to create fire by friction even, just by using a bow and a spindle and moving it back and forth so much that I actually created a spark that can be used to light a twine nest on fire and then use it to start the rest of the fire. But I don't want to get that advanced right now. I want to talk about the three types of things that you need in starting a fire. First of all, you need oxygen. That's how fire lives and breathes. So you want to make sure you're in an open space and that you have proper air circulation. This is also one of the reasons why you can't stuff your fire with a bunch of leaves because there will be no air circulation for which the fire to thrive and grow. Another thing that you need is a source, a spark. Without that proper fire starting method, whether it's a lighter or a match or fire by friction, you're not going to be able to start a fire as well. But the most important thing that you need is fuel. If there's nothing to burn, then there's not going to be a fire. There might be sparks, there might be plasma energy crackling through the sky, or we like to call it lightning. Um, but without anything to catch fire, there will be no fire, of course. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the types of fires that you can build. So if we're building a small fire, the first thing that you need is tinder. So tinder is the types of small stuff. You might think that dead leaves burn very well, and they do. They also create a lot of smoke. They're really not the best campfire building material. So good tinder that I always like to use on the Klondike Derbies and campouts that I went on as a youth is uh, I like to use pocket lint or uh, a lot of the fluff that comes out of the dryer, uh, dryer sheets and uh, twine and just kind of uh, stuff that frays easily. Uh, little bits of paper, sometimes the, the paper uh, that you use uh, it can cannot be the best sometimes, but certain types of paper can burn really well. And you put all of this tinder at the heart of your fire, in the fire lay. Now it's really important, especially if you're not experienced, to always make a fire within a campfire circle that's surrounded by stones and uh, it's dug out and there's no brush, there's, there's nothing else that can catch fire so that it can grow outside of that circle. So once you've gathered your tinder, you also want to get kindling. Now kindling is basically when you get sticks that are, that are no wider than the width of my finger. Really, uh, you uh, want sticks that are as small as this stick or as small as this stick as a whole. And you continue to break it apart and you build it on top of each other so that perhaps you're making a little bit of a TP pyramid structure. And then, once you've built that kind of fire, uh, you, you have a good um, place for it to start because the kindling is thin and will catch fire easier. Uh, you want to use dead wood because if the wood is still alive from whatever tree it was around and it's green, it's going to create a lot of smoke, but it's not going to catch fire super well. Um, one of the best ideas uh, that one of my old scatmasters gave me was to use something he called squaw wood, which is dead tree limbs. And if you can reach them, uh, like I see a few around me right now, if you can reach them, um, they've been off the ground, so they haven't been getting wet on the surface of the earth. Um, but they're also still dead, so they're dry in that way as well. So it's some of the most dry wood that you could possibly find. And once you gather that together, and you start a fire, and it's successful, then is when you add fuel. And the fuel is, uh, is logs and sticks that are this big, or depending on the size of your fire, even bigger. Uh, sometimes there's big bonfires at camps and uh, ceremonies and things like that. So it really depends on what kind of fire you want to build. You have to have a plan before you do anything. And we here at the Scouts really appreciate 
good fire building techniques because we're a steward of the environment. We do not want forest fires to occur. Uh, a couple of years ago, we had a forest fire um, that kind of swept through uh, our Philmont Scout Ranch in New Mexico. And we did a lot to rebuild our high adventure camp. Um, but campfires and wildfires as a result can do a lot of damage. That's why it's really important to always build fires with the supervision of your troop, a parent, or a scout leader. Thank you for watching this video in the Scouting at Home video series. I've been Eagle Scout Eric and I want to thank you personally for watching this and also following along with me and doing these skills at your home. We're all doing our part in being courteous to the world and stopping the spread of the coronavirus. But I also wanted to ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel in the meantime. I'll be back here in a couple days with yet another scout skill for us all to work on. But if you subscribe to that YouTube channel, you'll be instantly notified when the next video goes up. Also, if you're on Facebook, please share this video around to your volunteers, to your friends. Sharing this video helps promote Scouting LaSalle Council and keeps us strong during this pandemic. Also, if you are watching with a parent or a guardian, we ask that if you are able and willing to make a Friends of Scouting donation to LaSalle Council. Donations can be collected on the homepage at LaSalleCouncilVSA.org. We thank you all so much for your time and your support. And this is Eagle Scout Eric, and I'll see you in the next video.